Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about edit text, which are used as input fields where your users can enter text in. To enter such an edit text, you have to go to the text tab in your layout editor and drag in a plain text, which is just the standard version of an edit text. And then let's constrain it to the parent by clicking on those two bars here and click first vertically in uh, horizontally in parent and vertically in parent and then it is centered. Then let's jump into our text tab here to see the XML code. And here you can see all the properties of our edit text that we just added. And the, the properties for the text are exactly the same as they were for um, text views. So in this case, if we change the text property, then of course the text of our edit text changes. So let's write, hey guys, if we take a look at the design tab, then the text of that edit text is of course, hey guys. And that is exactly the text property that you want to access when the user entered something in that edit text. So the same, you could just write text size here and set it to 30 SP, for example, just as we did it in the text view tutorial. And then the text size of our edit text will change to 30 SP. But for now, I want to remove those both lines here because I don't want to change the text size and I don't want to initially set a text to our edit text here. So let's remove that. And here you can see that is a new attribute, which is EMS. And that is just a typographic unit of font width that describes how many capital M's can fit into that edit text. And that only has an effect on the edit text if the width is set to wrap content as we have it here. So First, take a look how our edit text is now. Let's actually set some text into that, like three M's here, and take a look in the edit text. For now, this attribute says that 10 M's should fit into our edit text, or at least 10 M's. And if we change it to three, for example, and go back to the design tab, then you can see that exactly three M's from the current font that is selected for that edit text will fit into that edit text. And that can be useful if you want to use um, another font and you want to set your text size um, relative to what the font size actually is. Personally, I often just remove this EMS attribute because if we remove it, then the width of our text view will be as wide as is needed for that to fit that whole text anyways and we don't really need that EMS attribute here. Another cool attribute of edit text is the hint. So let's write hint here. And for example, just enter hey guys here. And if we now take a look in the design tab, nothing will happen. But if we remove that text here, so the actual text that is in our edit text, click on design again, then you can see there is hey guys in our edit text in a little bit more gray color. And that is not the actual text that is in our edit text. Instead, it's just the hint. And if the user clicks on that edit text, then this text will go away. So the hint will go away. And that is just to tell the user what this edit text is for. And actually, let's set the width of that edit text to match parent. So that looks a little bit better and is not as small as we had it before. Then you may have noticed this input type property here, which you will need very often when dealing with edit text. Currently it is set to text person name and the input type um, just describes what kind of data the user can enter in that edit text. So let's actually show you what happens if we run this app now. And as you can see, this is our little app with our text view, uh, our edit text. And the hint says, hey guys, if we click into that edit text now, then we can enter something and basically the whole keyboard shows up because the input type of our edit text is text person name. So by setting it to text person name, we tell Android Studio that we want an edit text um, where the user is able to enter a name of a person. And for the name of a person, you of course need all the letters here might also need the numbers, I don't know, but that is actually the input type. And if we 
click in, the, in that input type field here, remove it and press control space to show all the possible options here. Then you can see, for example, there is a number type here. Let's press enter here to insert that number and run our app again. And if we now click into our edit text, then we are only able to enter numbers. So for example, if you want the user to enter his age, then this would be probably the right input type because you don't want to show him his whole keyboard when the only thing he should enter is just his age. And by doing that, you minimize the risk for errors on the one hand because the user cannot enter much wrong information that you don't want to have in that edit text. And on the other hand, the user does not have to search long for the numbers on his keyboard. Instead, they are shown directly to him. Another cool input type, which you need probably a lot, is text password here. So that is just a simple password field. If you run this app now, then you can see if we click in that edit text now and enter something, then it is exactly the behavior you um, expect of a password field that nobody can read what you entered here. Then what you probably need a lot is the phone input type, which just displays all the characters that are needed to enter a phone number, which is similar to the numbers, but um, to the number input type, but a little bit different because for phone numbers, you can have some other characters like the plus, which you don't have for numbers. So let's enter phone here, run that app. And as you can see, that is exactly the um, keyboard you expect to have when you want to um, dial a phone number. Now for the rest of this video, I want to make a little calculator app with you that is only able to add two numbers. So we have to add a text, a button and a text view here. So we can enter two numbers here, the first one and the second one, click on add, and then the result will show up in that result text view. So this is what I want to do for the rest of this video with you together to show you how to actually create several views and let them interact with each other. So let's start by removing this edit text here and create that layout completely from scratch. So let's go in that design editor here and drag in two plain text for the two numbers we want to add and another one. Then I will take the first one, constrain it to the left, the top and the bottom. Oops. And the second one I will constrain to the right and also to the top and the bottom. Then I will select those two edit texts here, right click and create a horizontal chain. And also change the layout width of those to zero dp. So they match um, the whole width of our screen. Then I will add a button here. So go to buttons, drag in a button into our layout constrain the top to the bottom of a text view here and edit text, the left to the parent left. And finally, go to text again and drag in a text view for our result. I will constrain the top to the bottom of an edit text here, the bottom to the button bottom, the left to this edit text left and the right to this edit text right to center it between that um, edit text. The rest of those attributes for the views here I will make in the in the text tab in XML. And let's start by changing all the IDs for our views. Let's click into that ID for our edit text, press shift and F6 and change the part after the slash to ET first number and press enter. Then it gets changed everywhere. Do the same for the second edit text, shift and F6 and change it to ET second number. Do the same for the button. I will call it button um, add and the text view I will call TV result. Then I will change that text of that text view to result. I will change the text of that button to add. I will remove that text of both edit texts here so they don't display text initially. 
And instead, I will add a hint here for those edit texts. This is the second number edit text, so I will enter second number as hint. Then we can copy that line and paste it into our first edit text. And of course, change it to first number here. And finally, because we only want the user to enter numbers, we changed the input type of both edit texts to number. And here too. And that is actually everything we need to change. If we take a look, then we have those two hints here, first number, second number, our button says add, and that edit text, uh, that text view here says result. Actually, we can change the text size of that text view a little bit. Let's scroll down and set it to 30 SP, for example. Yeah, that looks fine. So now we can jump into our main activity.kt file, go into our onCreate function, and add an onClick listener to our button. Because when the user clicks on that add button, we want to perform the actual addition here. So let's write button add dot set on click listener. And here we need to um, get the texts of our edit text and convert them to integers. So let's write val well, first number is equal to et first number dot text. And as I showed you in the text view tutorial, this text property here is not a string, it's an editable. Because of that, we need to first convert it to a string. So dot to string. And because we want first number to be an integer, so we can calculate with it, we need to convert that string to an integer again. And do the same for the second number. Well, second number is equal to et second number dot text dot to string dot to int. Then we can save the result in a variable. So we write result is equal to first number plus second number. And then finally set the result to the text view. So tv result dot text is equal to result dot to string. So in that direction, it is actually possible. Because as I said, text is an editable, editable and not a string. But we can set strings to an editable. But we cannot get a string from an editable without calling to string. So in this case, it's possible. And if we run this app now, then you can see it looks exactly the same like I showed you before. And if we enter two numbers here, click on add, then the result of those two numbers added together will show up in our text view. So that's actually everything I wanted to show you about edit text. Um, those are actually not that complicated, but you need them very often. So I thought that it would be helpful for you if I showed you just how to use different views with edit text to um, let them interact with each other. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.